Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris, and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, today, we are broadcasting from uh, the panhandle of Florida. Um, kind of a funny, funny name here. I have to, I have to look at the map again because it's, it's a. Uh, Kind of an odd name. It's called Funiac Springs. So I'm broadcasting you uh, to you from Funiac Springs in uh, northern Florida, where it's about 90 some odd degrees and the humidity is a lot. My the the screen on my little cell phone here is hogging over. Today, this is our third installment of the the series that we're doing on Kundalini and health. And uh, before we get started, I'd like to thank uh, Santara and her family from the Kingdom of Kerry of Ireland, and I would like to to welcome her. And so, hello, Santara. Hello, Chris, and hello, listeners. I'm in a lot cooler climate than you are there. Um, So, good to hear you. And hello from Ireland. And I, uh, I'm here with uh, Eileen Laurel. This is her home state, and uh, we'll be taking her down to Fort Myers. Um, so for those of you who are just tuning into this program for the first time, I'd like to let you know some other resources for uh, listening to this information. Uh, the first one is uh, Kundalini, K-U-N-D-A-L-I-N-I, Awakening Systems One dot com, and that's Systems One. That's the number one dot com, and that's the uh, main website uh, put up by Glenn Ola. And so I would like to uh, put out a thank you to Glenn Ola for designing and maintaining that website. Uh, there's also the Kundalini Awakening Systems One at Yahoo Groups dot com. There's a Kundalini Awakening Systems one on Facebook. There's a Kundalini Exclamation Point on Facebook. Kundalini Ashram, a Kundalini Ashram on Facebook, as well as uh, Kundalini Healing on Facebook, as well as Yahoo Groups. Uh, there's also a YouTube channel called uh, Chrisum, and then the the number zero Kundalini, and that looks like Chrisum O Kundalini. And that's at Yahoo, and at, currently we have about 258 videos, and I have more to add from my cross-continent uh, journey over here to Florida. Uh, so feel free to partake of the information offered at those sites, and uh, we will go ahead and begin. Uh, Kundalini and health. I'll try not to repeat what I what I spoke about in the last two uh Installments. I'm going to go straight in to, uh, well, for those new people that are tuning in right now and for those uh, who are listening in the archives for the first time, uh, there's, a, there's a system that I, that I support called the Kundalini Awakening uh, Safety Protocols. And these you can find on Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com. You go to that website. It's the fourth uh, menu item down on the left, and you know you click onto that and you read these protocols. And these protocols are really for the health of the person who is having Kundalini or wanting to have Kundalini. So I just want to get that out right now. Uh, once again, uh, a little bit of a review: Kundalini is in charge of your health. When you have Kundalini. Kundalini takes over many of the systems of the body that regulate uh, heart rate, regulate breathing, regulate enzyme production, regulate hormone production, regulate uh, salt uh, retaining production, regulate, uh, you know, almost all of the systems of the body that Kundalini will regulate. This doesn't mean that Oh, all of a sudden, you know, you're going to be doing everything different in your life. But it does mean that sometimes, all of a sudden, you will feel differently. Your, your body will respond differently to, stimula- to stimuli that you've responded to in one way before, but after Kundalini, it responds completely different. And I want you to know that this is normal. 
Uh, many of the gifts that come along uh, within the transformation are also normal kriyas, spontaneous movements, which we've talked about. Uh, the influence of discarnate entities, which we've talked about. Uh, you know, many of the of the uh, systems that uh, can play havoc with the person's ego consciousness, such as drinking caffeine or processed sugars or you know, eating in a very unhealthy way or partaking of alcohol or drugs, uh, which we have talked about. And so if you want to go, uh, if you want to hear those conversations, uh, go back uh, into the archives and you can see that there's about, well, there's a lot of conversations listed there. And uh, and, and thumb through those and see, see which ones call to you the most. So to begin today, uh, oh, also I, I should... Uh, I should give you the numbers here, so I'll give you the numbers. The the uh, guest call in number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. That's three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. So let's begin. I was speaking with Amelia prior to the show just for a little bit. She suggested that uh, we go ahead and begin with the uh, the organs of the body and and, and you know. She suggested we start with the heart, and so I will. Let's start with the heart. The heart is the fourth chakra. The heart is the center of the human being. It is the place of emotions. It is the place of love. It is the place of divine connection uh, from a love-based, connection-based aspect. Uh, Without love, there is nothing. Without love, this universe falls apart. The multiverse falls apart. Love is the the final uh, firmament that the divine has placed our 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 little experiment at being attached to materialism and then moving away from that attachment. Our cells, our bodies are are, are concentrations of cellular communities and the cellular communities are held together through the music of love. And love is such a huge, huge uh, process and application and emotion and energy that, I, you know, an entire, you know, I could do a hundred shows on, on Kundalini and the quality of love. But for this show here, the heart, the heart is a manifestation of life and the, the continuous pulsation of life uh, that allows us to stay in the body, that allows us to to uh, circulate the blood, the blood which is more of a plasma than it is an actual fluid. The blood is a is a is a, a liquid organ on the body, and this organ, uh, when a person has Kundalini, is once again is enhanced even further than it already is. It is enhanced in a way that allows certain phenomena to occur uh, in the heart. So, for instance, the heart rate will will, will be severely increased uh, when a person has the kundalini and, and the kundalini is coursing through the system. The heart rate will go up to a phenomenal level, which means really fast, really fast heart rate. Uh, this will send the person to the emergency room typically, not because it's hurting them or it's not healthy for them, it's because it's so surprising to them, and they don't know to expect this with the kundalini. So for all of you who are listening to this and who are striving to awaken the kundalini, know that your heart rate will go very, very, very fast uh, for a certain amount of time. Not for the rest of your life, but for a certain amount of time, yes, it will it will increase, as will your blood pressure go very high, things of that nature. Alternatively, the, the heart rate can go very, very low low and slow and an MD taking uh, you know taking your pulse will look at you and wonder how you're able to even stay conscious so once again as I've mentioned in other programs the the spectrum of the human experience and the, in, in, in this case the spectrum of the response that the heart gives uh, with regard to the Kundalini infusing it, will explore the different uh, poles of, of of that spectrum 
of expression. So, you know, within the spectrum of expression of of heart rate, you'll go extremely high and you'll go extremely low. Uh, and the same with the BP, the blood pressure, extremely high and then extremely low. And then, and then you know, after you have a few of these experiences, uh, a level will be found, once again, by the Kundalini, a level will be found that is appropriate for that individual. I must stress that each person comes into this Kundalini experience as a unique individual. Nobody gets to have the same uh, kundalini awakening or activation process. We come to this world with different karma, and so with this different karma comes a unique uh, uh, awakening process for each and every individual. Now, there will be plenty of similarities, and, and yes, of course, we can learn from each other, but we do not want to 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 look at each other in such a way that, gives us the illusion that everybody's going to do it the same way because it's just not going to be the case. Everybody's different. Uh, with the heart rate, um, they will hook you up at the ER. They'll hook you up. They'll put you on a treadmill. They'll, you know, they'll do all the, all the tests for, for cardiac uh, emergency. And, uh, you know, they'll typically, you know, unless they're, they're not being honest, they'll come back to you and they'll say, oh, Oh, Mr. Christian, oh, we couldn't find anything wrong with you. Maybe you're just a little nervous or stressed out. <laughs> and off you go. And, you know, if you don't have insurance, well, you've dropped quite a bit of money on that one little visit. And if you have insurance, well, then the insurance has dropped a lot of money on that one little visit. So just so you know, um, with the heart feelings of love and emotions of love can stream out of the heart. Uh, sometimes the kundalini will take a hold of your heart, and it, it is literally a way that the kundalini grabs hold of your heart, and you feel yourself led uh, through different choices and decisions in your, mind, in your life from the heart. So, for instance, when I'm driving down the freeway and all of a sudden the kundalini grabs my heart, and pulls me towards the local hospital. Well, that's, I know, and I know from enough experience that when I'm getting pulled to that local hospital that there's a healing there that needs to be given. And so, you know, I don't, uh, I don't resist it, and I go to the hospital, and, of course, there's a parking space open for me, which just amazes me every time. And I park in the, in, the, in, the, in the parking spot, and I go into the, to the meditation or the chapel, and I go into meditation. And usually the person or the, or the people that need to be healed uh, appear in some way or form, a family member or whatever. And this is all led by the heart. The heart is the seat of the compassion response. It's the seat of the, of the bliss response, to some degree of the bliss response within the body. And so the heart is a major, major organ of expression and experience within the, the Kundalini awakening uh, experience that a person will have. Uh, your heart will be guided by Kundalini. It will be guided in, 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 in the heart rate, in the feeling, in uh, what decisions that you make along the lines of compassion or or healing work, or things of that nature. And you may start to cry just by virtue of the love that is streaming through you in, in amazing levels, amazing experiential levels. I mean, these levels are very strong. And typically, if you try to resist it, well, you, you can't. You can't resist that down It'll just hurt you if, you if you try to resist the expression because as we've spoken about before, the tears and the crying are release valves for the amount of energy that's coming through it, and in this case coming through the heart. So the heart is a very, very, very special organ. And so you do, of course, you want to to take care of the heart in uh, maintaining uh, proper cardiac function. So get out there and do some walking. Do not be a couch potato. Do not sit still except for, you know, an hour or two of meditation. 
I'm going to suggest that you move. I'm going to suggest that you do the five Tibetan. I'm going to suggest that you do yoga. I'm going to suggest that you do pilates or whatever kind of exercise routine you like to do. But the Kundalini wants you to move. It you, doesn't want you to be stationary. I don't care if you, if you can only walk for 10 minutes. Well, then walk for that 10 minutes and then try to increase it to 12 and then 14 and then 20 and then, you know, gradually increase it. Uh, more damage can be done to you within a Kundalini awakening context if you're constantly sitting still than, than really, I mean, sitting still is a form of resistance, and this is where many of the problems uh, come to you is from that level of resistance. So move your body, move, hike, run, jog, walk, exercise. If you if you live in Ireland and you're you know, you've got nothing to do and it's raining outside, well just go walk in the rain. <laughs> or if you live here in Florida, go walk on the beach. <laughs> the beaches here in Florida are very beautiful. Uh, go walk on the beach. I mean really get out and move. Move the body. It's very, very important for the heart rate and for the for the different uh polarities of spectrum that the heart uh, uh, manifests within a kundalini excitation. Really, really, really do this, folks. I can't stress it enough. Uh, nurture your heart through the nutrients that you, that you, that you partake of. Uh, you know, if you, if you're, if, if, I know that people like their pork. Here in the United States, people just love their pork, and, and in Ireland and Britain too, and some of the other countries around the world. Um, I'm going to suggest you, you back off of the pork if if you can, if it's something that you can do. Certainly, uh, uh, bacon uh, or, or really really high cholesterol or really high fat diets that that uh, they, they taste wonderful. I'm sure they taste wonderful for those who like them. Uh, but if you're not moving, if you're not moving around then they're they're beginning to to help those arteries clog and and this isn't just with with pork but this is with you know any of those geez you know driving across the country I see these advertisements for monster hamburgers you know and you and you you look at what they're oh gosh first of all to, to even get your mouth around them is you know you have to take it in sections uh, these 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 this is not what I would consider to be good cardiac health. Um, I would do your best to stay away from the red meat unless the kundalini is directing you towards it. There's a certain level of the kundalini experience where you will be directed to eat uh, red meat and any meat and some of the strangest meats too, like uh, venison or rattlesnake or, you know, some of those types of, of wild meats uh, you may be given a, a compulsion to partake of. And I'm going to say partake of them, absolutely partake of them. But, in, in, a, in a generally maintained nutritional context, uh, begin to lighten up your diet. You know, get a lot of vegetables, get a lot of fruits, get a lot of nuts. Um, try not to just be, um, you know, uh, you know, within a nutrition equation that is very, very limited. Expand it as much as you can and make sure you get that exercise. The heart rate needs to be exercised. Uh, so the arteries that feed the heart are like the arteries that feed the kundalini. It's very, very necessary. If you look at some of the anatomical charts, uh, you'll see that the, that, you know, one, one area of, of the arteries that go into the heart are red and the other that come out of the heart are blue. And things of this nature, which leads us straight into the lungs. The lungs are another very, very, very important uh, organ complex within the uh, within the human body. Uh, it's not just air that goes through the lungs. It's prana. Prana is is uh, is an energetic life force that that is in clear abundance here in Florida. The closer you get to the equator, 
the, the stronger the the mixture of life forms occur, and then you know, and, and competition increases, and you know, all the different life forms are really struggling to to be competitive and to survive, and, and you know, prana is a part of that life force. It's very strong here. Uh, in any of the tropical countries, very strong in Martinique when I was down there as well. Um, the lungs, if you if you do a, a type of uh, of a breathing prayer that I teach sometimes, uh, you'll retain your breath for about seven seven or eight seconds, and then you'll slowly release that breath, and you'll feel that rush. You'll feel kind of an energetic rush as you exhale that air. That that energetic rush is the production and the assimilation of prana within your body. When you inhale air and, and prana, your, your body transforms it into an energy that is conducive to chi production, chi, C-H-I production. Uh, some people pronounce it chi or, you know, I don't care. C-H-I looks like chi to me, so that's what it is to me. Uh, it's fairly uncomplicated. <laughs> anyway, so... As, as you inhale the, the, the prana, the, the, this extreme life force anywhere on this world, uh, and you hold it for a little bit, you'll feel the production of an energy within the body that is conducive to to uh, the energetic anatomy of the body. And we don't have a lot of books that show you the energetic anatomy of the human system, but there is one, and it is out there. And this, the lungs help produce that. And so once again, if you're if, if you're sitting still a lot, your lungs are not being allowed to expand and and uh, and and compress, expand and compress, expand and compress, and your body isn't being given the opportunity to to have that in and out airflow and that in and out energetic uh, development, and so uh, certain systems within your body become starved for for energetic uh, expression. And so the lungs are extremely important for this. So if you're a smoker, do your best to stop. Do your best to stop. I mean, do your best. And don't replace it with pot or anything else. Don't replace it with uh, whatever those vape, smokeless tobacco things are. I would like you to do your best to keep your lungs as clear and clean as you possibly can. You have to remember that the Kundalini Awakening process is all about purification. It's not about trading one addiction for another. Okay? Keep your lungs pure. Get out there and run in the jungle. I was speaking to another gentleman that I'll be visiting here in Florida. And, uh, you know, he'll drink uh, two gallons of milk and then he will take off through the jungle. And let me tell you, Florida, it's not a forest, it's jungle. <laughs> it's a jungle place. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it. I was, I was, uh, I was at a preserve in Biloxi, and jeez, Louise, you know, I mean, this is they it shares the coastline with Florida, so it's, it's very similar wildlife and plant setup. And my gosh, it is, it is as thick as the Amazon, and I have been into the Amazon. I know how it is there, and it's thicker, if not, it is thicker than the Amazon in some places. You know, at least the part of the Amazon that I that I uh, went through. Uh, it's a jungle down here, and it's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. The the uh, for the lungs, it's a it's a true blessing because every plant gives off a different type of oxygen. You know, the the plants love the carbon dioxide, and they turn the you know, photosynthetics. You know, change the carbon dioxide into oxygen. Well, each plant has its own flavor and signature of, of energetic quality that is given through that oxygen molecule. And so as you run through the forest or you run through the jungle, you're partaking of these, these different energetic uh, uh, nutritional signatures that each plant gives off. And, and I'm talking about the mosses, I'm talking about the pine trees, the the, the Liana vines and all of the different types of plants that you get in the jungle environment. Uh, in addition to the prana that is developed, you know, from, you know, mostly from, from uh, one to six in the morning. So there's this huge uh, menu, shall we say, of lung food 
in the jungle. And the lungs take it all in and they transform it. And it is, it is as precious to you as life. It is as precious to you as your heart. It is as precious to you uh, as your kundalini is. Now, with the lungs, the kundalini will regulate your breathing sometimes. Sometimes your breathing will go extremely high. It will force you to do what, what the uh, Sanskriti people call the strika, which is like bellows breath or, or breath of fire. You know, stuff like that. I hope you could hear that. I'm not sure. Could you hear that, Amelia? Yeah, I could hear that. Okay, thank you. Sounds like a bellows. <laughs> yep, it's like a bellows. Uh, it'll go very, 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 very fast. And if you don't know what's happening, once again, fear will seep into the equation. But because you're listening to this broadcast, you do know that it's a natural part of the Kundalini control over the cardiovascular system. And this is the vascular system that we're talking about here, the breathing, the lungs. Uh, it'll also slow your breath down to the point where you'll stop breathing. And this really scares people. They'll be sitting there in meditation, and all of a sudden, they'll just stop breathing for a long time. And, and worse yet, they won't feel the need to breathe because the kundalini is taking the place of the, the, uh, the vascular system or the, 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 the lungs are just being put on hold for a moment. This is a gift of the kundalini. This is a phenomenon of the kundalini. This is not anything to be afraid of. However, however, when it happens to you, you know, you can sit here and listen to Chris until the cows come home, but if it happens to you, oh, my God, I think I'm going to die. But you're not. You're not going to die. This is a fairly common uh, experience that, that people have with the kundalini. It just stops your breath. Uh, and, and you don't die, you don't go to the next world, you don't do anything except you just kind of feel the control that the kundalini is exerting over the, the, the body's requirement of having air or breathing air, a, you know, a certain number of times per minute, you know. You know so, so understand this and know this, that the kundalini will take control of your lungs. Now, the other thing is, if you have been smoking, if you have been living in a, in a harsh city, a toxic environment, if you've been living around a lot of dust, like I have in my life, I've lived a lot, a lot of dust. You know, my lungs are still being purged after all these years. I can tell you how bad it was. I used to, I used to be a farmer and working on farms, and this was before the days where they had the enclosed cabins on the tractors, and so you're just breathing a lot of dirt, a lot of dust a lot of diesel particulate matter, a lot of smoke, a lot of nasty stuff. Um, I would really, really counsel you to get into a cleaner environment if you can, number one. I have to say it. I know that not everybody's in a position where they just, oh, okay, Chris, it's said for me to move, and off I go. So, no, I'm not expecting you to do that. I am expecting you, if you can do it, then do it. Okay? If you cannot, then you just, you know, you're going to deal with life the way it is. Um you will start to cough. You'll, the, the kundalini will get, begin to purge your lungs. And I want you to be okay with the coughing. You may have fits of coughing. Oh, my gosh. Fits, 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 and fits. And you, 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 I, at this point, I want you to really pay attention to the intuition that the kundalini is giving you. Well, is the current environment that I'm living in conducive to my breathing health, my vascular health? Is it, is it helping me or hurting me? And, uh, and, can I move? Do I have the the ability to move to a different place? And if so, you know, am I willing to go there? I'm gonna want. I'm gonna ask you to consider doing that. It is not the the lungs are just too important. They're just too important. Okay, I want you to get out. I want you to start singing. If you go to church, sing in the church. If you like uh, singing in the shower, sing in the shower. Uh, singing is a way of controlled breathing, and it usually brings people joy. Maybe not those people that are hearing you, as in my case, but 
to yourself. It, it brings you joy. It's a form of, of expressing love through you. Or it's a way of channeling emotions through your body that allow you to 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 express them and, and not keep them bottled up in the many ways that we humans like to do. So start singing. As I mentioned with the heart, uh, cardiovascular exercise is very, very important. And as much as possible, and I did mention this, but I'm going to mention it now, do it outside. I know, I know, for those of you who live in Los Angeles and Detroit and New York and Baltimore and, uh, you know, Houston and, and many of these places where they're, the outside is worse than the inside, then do it inside. <laughs> do it at your gym if you, if you must. Um, I, one of the reasons I don't like circulated air systems is because mold, toxic molds, grow in, uh, in, in HVAC systems, and they're typically not maintained or cleaned. It's just like at the hospital. They don't clean the ceiling. Okay? All the guts and blood and batters, you know, it goes right up there on the ceiling and, oh, well, we'll just ignore that. And the other thing is, is, is is very few places will clean those air ducts. And so I, that's one of the reasons why I say just get outside. You know, summer, winter, spring, fall, get outside as much as you can, even if it's just walking bundled up in a jacket in the dead of winter. Uh, don't endanger yourself, of course. Don't do that. But uh, do your best to get fresh prana, fresh air into those lungs. The lungs will appreciate it. Now, there's uh, certain aspects of uh, of the lungs that are called the alveoli, and these are part of the uh, the, the processing of oxygen and carbon dioxide uh, within the cardiovascular systems. When you're smoking, you clog these up. You clog these up, and, and they're not able to work properly. And so, uh, if you, as much as possible, I mean. You know, I don't really care if you're, you know, addicted to, say, marijuana or something like that. Marijuana, to me, is not a deadly drug. Uh, eat it. Make those cookies or the brownies or whatever. Just eat it. Just don't take the, the smoke into your lungs. And with tobacco, well, I don't like you eating that either. I, you know, the, if you've ever seen the nicotine molecule, it's, it's like sharp swords and daggers going up and down. You can only imagine what that's doing now. But I understand. I understand people People like to have their smokes. And they like to have their chewing tobacco. And so I understand that, too. Uh, you can have Kundalini and still be addicted to these things, although the Kundalini will probably attempt to unaddict you to them. Um, and so, so the lungs are very, very important. And, and one of the things that I'm going to suggest that you do is when you're breathing, doing a breathing meditation, when I say, you know, follow the breath. Well, you know, you know, you know the master's going, oh, my, my child, yes, you just must follow the breath, follow the breath, follow the breath. You know, and, and the American's looking at that and going, well, oh, follow the breath and envisioning this little cloud of air following it around town. This is not what they mean. <laughs> I had a hard time with it, too. I was like, gosh, you know. But the Kundalini gives you some very, very explicit instruction. It's not following the breath. It's paying attention to the breath. Forcing yourself to breathe a certain way. Like with the Bastrika or the breath of fire. You know, it forces you to go very, very fast with it. Well, alternatively, it'll it'll give you uh, the inclination to go very, very slow and deep. And do that. And this can take you into many of the meditative absorptive states, which I have yet to speak of on, the, on this on this uh, broadcast. So know this about the lungs. I could stay on the lungs for a long time, but I'm not going to. I have to move on. The kidneys are uh, very important. The adrenals very important. I've kind of gone through those systems before, but I'll briefly touch on them again. The kidneys uh, monitor the amount of waters in the system, the amount of salts that are in the system. Uh, the kidneys are one of the one of the organ systems that you'll really feel expand beyond your belt line. When the kundalini reaches the kidneys, the kidneys will expand up to about one third of their normal size. And so, when you put a belt on, and I wear a belt with my jeans, and so you know I'm wearing a belt, and I can feel my kidneys uh, arc arcing over my belt line. And, you know, you, you go and you, and you feel back and you go, oh, my gosh, you've never felt your kidneys this big before. 
Most of you have never felt your kidneys before. And then when the Kundalini comes, you feel the kidneys. You say, oh, my word, what is going on? And, uh, and so this is just part of the infusion. It's nothing to be concerned about. It is a good thing. Uh, the, the kidney systems or the urinary systems are being... Uh, are experiencing the, the kundalini infusion. And this infusion goes through and it upgrades all the cells from, a say, a 12-volt system to a 12-million volt system. And so, of course, you're going to feel that a little bit. And, and with the adrenals that sit right on top of the kidneys, well, you'll also, you know, that that system will, will begin to hyper-express and, and a lot of adrenaline will go into your system. And if you don't know what's happening, you become very paranoid and very frightened, very scared, very angry at times. And, uh, well, all it is is it's extra adrenaline, fight or flee hormone coming into the body without the body having anything to fight or flee from. And so the ego will create something to fight or flee from. And so I've talked about this before. And so this is what occurs. And so, of course, you take anything that's going to stimulate the adrenals out of your diet, such as caffeine, such as uh, processed sugars, processed flours, high fructose corn syrup. Uh, you, you take out anything that begins to manifest as a stimulant upon the body. So when you're drinking your tea, no more black tea. Black tea has more caffeine in it than a cup of coffee. I know a lot of you don't know that, but it's true. Uh, even green tea has four milligrams, typically four milligrams of uh, caffeine in it. And I'm going to ask you to stop drinking that. Caffeine stays in the, in the, in the body for, you know, 36 hours. For that 36 hours, you're going to have some real problems trying to sleep. You're going to have some real problems trying to relax. You're going to have some real problems trying to meditate. You know, these these are important issues, and so you really need to pay attention. And, and I've touched on this before, so I'll move on. Um, pancreas, you know, the Isles of Langerhand, uh, monitoring the different levels of, uh, of, of sugar in the body and manifesting, you know, you know certain elements within the, the pancreas that... Uh, that allow for a balancing of sugars and the body's response to sugars in in the bloodstream. Uh, this too, this too will 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 become infused. You may not feel it so much, but your cravings for sugar may begin to change. Uh, you'll sometimes you'll have a, an amazing increase of sugar intake. You'll just desire it so much to the to the other end of the the spectrum, which will be absolutely not. You won't even want to look at it. I mean, there's nothing. In it. You won't want any of it. And so uh, over over a short period of time, the Kundalini will find that balance for you, and the Isles of Langerham will do their work. Um, moving into the to, the to the liver, the liver is a level of detoxification. The Kundalini will detox the liver. Um, you'll feel movement. You'll feel movement uh, uh, within the the... the the uh the perineum I not not perineum, the <laughs> definitely the wrong word there. The the pericardium I guess. Um I'm, I'm getting into my old anatomy uh uh there's a tissue that holds the all the organs together inside the uh the thorax of the human and you'll start feeling movement within that. Some sometimes your liver is gonna jump. Uh, the you know, the lobes of the liver will jump. The intestines, of course, with their peristalsis will jump. Uh, the liver is, is, is a part of the whole detoxification process, and it will get detoxed. Uh, your your um, excrement, your number two, uh, may become much darker than, than would merit uh, the food that you're eating. Uh, that's part of the detoxification program uh, that the liver has a part to play in. Um, if you have liver stones or anything of that nature, don't worry about that because the kundalini will take care of that. Your liver is a very, very powerful organ, extremely powerful. And as the kundalini comes through it, uh, it is changing, changing every cell of the liver, every, you know, throughout the lobe of the liver, it's really changing it and adjusting it to be able to withstand and to handle and to participate within the new kundalini community within the thorax of the human system. The Kundalini is, is, you know, working very in, in very close uh, connection with the gallbladder and the and the and the bile and the whole bit. Okay, so don't be surprised that that the uh, that the liver is going to be 
very active within the infusion. And, you know, it's going to come across a difference. You know, it, it, it'll have a lot to do with your energetics, how much energy you have to do this or that. Uh, what part of the detox you're in will determine how much energy you have. Um, when, when you're doing certain uh, movements in yoga, uh, you may faint because of the level of detoxification that's occurring. So be careful when you're doing yoga, especially the hot yoga, and you're doing moves that really – that really work the liver. Uh, be very careful with that because you just might fall over backwards, and I would like I don't want you to hurt yourself. The intestines, moving into the intestines. The intestines, the intestines are a huge electrical coil, but it's not electricity that they're that they're manifesting. It's chi. It's the uh, the major second chakra area of chi energy that gets uh, expanded and circulated uh, within the body with the intestines. Oh, and of course, you know, taking taking the energy from food and and uh and the whole peristaltic digestive movements, the uh the snake like movements of the uh of the intestine. Um you know, very, 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 very strong. This is uh there's an electrical term that I can't think of right now, but this the 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 intestines build energy. Uh, they will take a small amount of energy and expand it and expand it and expand it and expand it. This is this is what they do uh, with uh, with chi in, in the in the in Indonesia. It's called it's a it's a combat technique called margaluyu. M a r g a l l u margaluyu l u y u. You can look it up on the web. It's it's uh, fairly. People are ringing bells from a distance, you know, just by by contracting the uh, second chakra and the and the chi, shooting chi at each other is kind of what they do. And and if your chi is strong enough, well then you you can you can uh, hurt that other warrior or something like that. Um, it it you know it's it's I won't say it's a misuse. It's just another use for uh, for what people do within deep levels of competition with, with one another. Uh, and so and so once again, you know, here we have the intestines, this, this huge capacitor, that's the word I was looking for, this huge capacitor for chi energy, okay? Chi is, is adopted by the kundalini. It's actually, it's part of the, as, as the wave of kundalini comes up, uh, the chi is also transformed, transformed into an energy that becomes, uh, the the expressive aspect of the kundalini. It's changed from chi into kundalini. Okay. Kundalini, basically, kundalini is in charge of everything. And so what it does is it it, uh, it takes over everything in its path. It takes over the organs, the, the, the bones, the bone marrow, the blood, the everything of, of the human being. It takes it over. It, it changes it completely. Uh, so just so so you know that there, once the kundalini is up, then it is kundalini. You, you don't get to call it chi energy anymore. It is kundalini energy after that. Uh, so just, just so you know, uh, the uh, as we move into uh, the, the reproductive system, uh, male and female, they basically do very, very similar things, and yet, of course, you know they're 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 positive and negative. They're they're opposed in those types of ways, so that the the the, the key fits into the lock, and the lock is formed to accept the key. The two become one, and the one become two. Um, both uh, genders have a series of fluids that collect in order to to express uh, within the reproductive. Uh, situation. Uh, both genders have seven fluids that come together that just like the seven chakras, the seven musical notes, you know, you can just go on on and on with, with what seven does within the human system. Uh, and, you know, one is internal, one is external. Um, with uh, the, the female uh they're in a unique position where they're not losing um, reproductive uh, fluidics. 
as much as say the males are. So of course, uh, when, when when the males uh, uh, give that energy or express that energy, you know, certain losses can take place. And, and so this is why many of the ancients would say, oh well, it's better just to be celibate and and not have that kind of, uh, of fluidic release. Whereas some of the some other ancients would say, oh well, you know, have that uh, fluidic release three or four times a day, depending on the season. This would be the ancient Chinese. And I feel that that's the better method uh, myself. Um, uh, this whole idea of celibacy is has been kind of uh, given a level of uh, confusion through uh, for many people through through certain belief systems that say, oh, you know, you give your sex to God or you get your sexual expression to God. And, you know, God doesn't really want that. He gave it to you for a reason. He didn't give it for you to give it back to him or her, for that matter. So it's for you to work with. <laughs> God has other things that he's dealing with, that she's dealing with. So, you know, with, with regards to the, to the uh, I want to go to one area on the men right now, the prostate gland. Prostate gland is not something that's just sitting there not doing anything. A modern medical science says, well, you know, prostate, well, it has some use. To, we're sure that there's a use there for it. Um, really, uh, well, you, prostatic fluid, prostatic fluid comes through from there, you know. So, but they don't really have an idea of how the prostate utilized within the, uh, the anatomical system. And, uh, well, the Kundalini uses that. Kundalini, the, the prostate is kind of like a, a pump. It's a reverse pump, and and it will pull the seven fluids that the uh, that the various glands uh, within the the male reproductive system has in it, and it will pull uh, reproductive fluids uh, from the testicles and up the uh, up the vas deferens, and then back into the uh, prostate gland, and then into the spine. And, you know, the doctors will dissect some poor guy who's died. He's like, well, I not seeing any spinal openings here. You know, we're not, how does this work out? So, the, you know, they're they're looking for empirical, scientific, you know, let's vivisect a person proof. And the Kundalini doesn't really require that. It just does it. And it may do it through a, a series of, uh, of, uh, of energetic osmosis, just the way that water vapor comes through a glass. Through, through, through the osmosis, so can can uh, energy travel from uh, the prostate and the fluidic uh, uh, energies within the prostate that are being collected there by the kundalini uh, into the spinal cord. And so, you know, the, the, the prostate is very important. Don't let them go and, and irradiate it or core it out like an apple. Don't do those things. It's got a very, very important job to do, okay, very important job. It's just like the thymus. The thymus gland, which is right under the, the, the sternum, you know, you know, for many, many, many years, it's like, oh well, you know, it's just uh, the thymus is well, it's just there, and, and well, we think it's better if we just like remove it, you know, and then uh, you know, a few years later, they go, oh wow, it's it's a major part of the immune response, and so, you know, within that understanding, you know, you kind of want to. Have people keep their hands off of your organs as far as the surgeons go, you know, unless you absolutely must without any, you know, shadow of a doubt, you know, it's just so bad, whatever, that it has to go. Then I understand that, of course, you know, your life is more important than than, than the organ. So I understand that as well. Uh, and then um, I know that the that the females will lose fluid every month. Um, and actually, that's quite powerful stuff. A lot of the ancients called that star fire, and they would uh, they would consume that uh, when it was taken from a certain uh, type of uh, well, a, a, a female at a certain age and during a certain time of life. Uh, they would try to use that as a Kundalini awakening process. And uh, you know, sure, fine. If, if, if that's where your focus is, great. You know, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, it might work. Uh, but I think the safeties are a much more viable way. I know the safeties will work. The Shakti bot that I give will work. Uh, so, you know, there, there are many different ways to explore uh, the Kundalini, uh, you know, through the major organs. Uh, the, the, the womb of life within the, within the human female is a huge thing. It's, it's, it's a 
major importance. Uh, it it is what the tailbone is to our to our kundalini. The the the, the womb is to to our our existence. So the sacred feminine, you know. I don't understand how people can treat women so poorly in, in this world, in this society, except that they're just too afraid of the power that the women would have if they weren't treated so poorly. It's amazing that 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 there is that, that there's even a word for for abusing females of the human species. This is just amazing to me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there right now. Don't hurt the women. Don't hurt the girls. Honor them as a visual aspect of the sacred feminine uh, in your life. Honor them. Love them. Help them. Assist them. Nurture them. Give to them the qualities of, of divine forbearance and nurturing that 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 you, as a as a man or woman, would would want to give to to. You know, a cherished child or a loved one. Uh, really, really, really. And mothers, just because in this in this society the men the men are so destructive towards females doesn't mean that you have to adopt it. And if it happened to you, doesn't mean you have to pass it on to the next generation. Stop it with you. Stop it. We need to honor the sacred feminine that 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 we see in, in, in the eyes and the, and the hearts of every woman on this planet. No more female genital mutilation. I have a real heart problem with that. It's just so not right. Kundalini does not like that at all. So none of that. None of that is allowed. Boy, you don't want me to be king in this world, I tell you. I've had this conversation with Amelia. <laughs> Boy, would there, <laughs> would there be some changes. Uh, you know, no more Sharia, no more stoning women just because, you know, somebody looked at them askew. Uh, anyway, getting off the topic here. So we're moving on. Uh, the skeletal system. The skeletal system is also uh, one of the major uh, systems that will be modulated by the Kundalini. Your bones will change. The uh, As I mentioned in some of the other shows, your cranium, your cranial plates will realign. The ligatures will loosen. And ligatures are the uh, are the, uh, the the sutures of the skull. That if you look at a skull, you'll see these little suture marks and these little plates that are coming across. Those of you of a, uh, who have a medical understanding know what I'm talking about. Um, the cranial plates will move, and they're not moving just because oh they feel like moving today. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Let's move. Uh, they're moving because the Kundalini is telling them and it's controlling it, causing causing the cranial plates to readjust themselves around the fontanelle. Sometimes you'll feel as if you have a pointy head. <laughs> it's kind of an odd feeling. Anyway, so the skeletal system will be changed, which which means that the, the marrow system will also be changed in the, uh, the amount of... Uh, of and the, and the quality of the blood in the system, which is, often, you know, which is developed in the bone marrow, will also change. Uh, these are part of the movements that the kundalini will take within a person. It changes everything, everything. And as I, I think I mentioned last week, uh, you'll feel the muscles tightening in your chest. For me, for me, and this is just for me, and remember, we're all unique. For me, it was a plating that would occur. I would, I felt. Plating. It's like these amazingly strong plates. Now, I don't mean dinner plates, okay? <laughs> I mean like tectonic plates within my body. Uh, came into this supreme alliance. They all lined up, which corresponded with, with the all the chakras opening up at the same time. This is a spinal sweep that I'm describing here. But it's a spinal sweep that doesn't just occur with the chakras opening. This is what you typically hear. You know, many of the New Age people are going, oh, yes, all the chakras open up. You know, and it's not just that at all. It's the, I mean, it, it's this huge, multi, multiple system of alignment that occurs. And this is what makes it so amazing to the person experiencing it. You know, and so for me, you know, I felt the, 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 the tectonic 
uh, plates within my my spine and my hips and my my legs and my chest and everything just came into this amazing alignment. And then, of course, you know, the freight train up the spine, you know, and, and exploding out the top of the head and the oneness with everything. Um, this this has a lot to do with the skeletal system. You know, when the skeletal system lines up, uh, certain things are going to happen. And so when you're doing the five Tibetans, well, you're not just conditioning energy flows, even though you are. You're also conditioning the skeletal flows and the organs that are functioning within the, the, uh, the I think, the myocardium, pericardium, whatever it is. Uh, uh, all of the organs are also being conditioned. Um, let me see how much time I have. I always forget I'm running out of time here. Oh, my gosh. Oh, good, 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 good. Uh, I'm going to open this up to questions right now. Uh, the call-in number is 347-934-0026. Let's go into the eyes. The eyes are, are uh, the eyes are an amazing system. They're, the the two physical eyes are part of a tertiary system, which includes the third eye. Not surprising. But. The third eye can manifest visual. Um, Phenomena upon the lower two physical eyes. Okay, so the third eye can manifest visual phenomena on the lower two uh, physical eyes. This is what gives you the waking vision. This is what gives you the vision that you're the only one who can see. You know, unless unless the, you know the person next to you is also experiencing you know kundalini, uh, you know of that nature and of that of that expression. And so, yeah, as 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 the sixth chakra goes, so too will the physical eyes move. Physical eyes are also a force of energy. The, the eye is an amazing thing. Just I could go on and on and on about the eyes. The eyes, you know, with their with their you know black and white seeing and their color seeing. And, you know, I'm not. I'm trying to stay away from the heart anatomical words. You're like cones. And, you know things that people don't really have a a lot of uh, of, of understanding about. I'm going to get actually a little bit worse. The eyes emit energy. The energy that the eyes emit is consciousness. So the eyes will emit awareness. And so as you're as you know if you're, you're 12 years old and you're you know, you're watching that beautiful woman undress outside the pond, you know, somewhere, wherever. And she all of a sudden feels somebody staring at her. She turns around it's because she's feeling your awareness that your eyes are projecting upon her. Okay? People can feel awareness. It's a fairly strong, strong uh, sensation. And the eyes produce it. Some of you have been to my seminars. You've heard me say that the eye, that vision has weight. Vision has a physical weight. That once, you know, the, the scientific measurement device comes into being, for for vision to be weighed, one can, can actually measure the force of vision that is coming from a, a human eye. Okay, so this this plays a this plays a part in some of the exalted skills that come into being with regards to a person who is visualizing something, putting awareness into an intended visualization and adding that energy from that awareness from the eyes. Okay, or if you look at my healing picture that I always have people look at because you know they they. They want to to receive a healing, or they want to practice, you know, devotion in different ways. Uh, we we do a form of trataka that allows your intention from your visual matrices or your eyes to connect with the kundalini in the picture of of the healing picture that that people are using for this for this purpose. It's amazingly strong, and kundalini once again, kundalini is. is can replicate itself in any way, shape, or form that it wants. And so if it wants to come out of that picture into your eye, well, there's so, then it does, and it does so quite strongly. And for those of you who wonder what that picture is, if you go to Kundalini Awakening, 
systemsone.com and you go to help and support and then you you further scroll on down to about Chrism and you see this picture and, and with uh with a bio right next to it. Well you copy that picture, hard copy it, because I don't like you staring into a computer screen. Hard copy that picture and then stare into the eyes and, and wait and feel that energy coming from the picture. Uh then you'll see what I'm under what, what I'm talking about here. But the eyes the eyes are exceptionally powerful. They're, they are like fingers of awareness that reach out from your eye sockets and massage massage the environment around you. They can massage it with love. That you know, just the way you you can you can hit a tree or you can embrace a tree with your hands. So you can do the same thing with your eyes. You can embrace with love. Loving eyes. You can embrace with anger, angry eyes. You, all of the emotions that you can use with any of your other um, capacities, any of your other, you know, sight, touch, you know, that type of thing, uh, the eyes can mimic it as well. And, and in many ways, you know, like when mom gives you that certain look, like, press up, what are you doing? You know, just from that one look, that you better stop doing what you're doing doesn't have to lift the fingers. She just has to look at you that special way. <laughs> and you know, with, without a shadow of a doubt. Same with Dad. You know, Dad says, you know, stop doing that. Well, he doesn't have to say that. He can just look at you as you're doing what you're doing, and you'll stop doing what you're doing. Amelia? Yes? Do you do that with your kids? Do you, do you give them the mom eye? <laughs> Yes, I think all moms have that ability. <laughs> of course, I mean I don't have I don't have to say anything. I mean you can just look, but it can be good as well though. You know you can give you can. It's not always a stop that thing. There there are, you know I can look as well and they know, yeah, well done or they know they know other That's things. Right. You know. That's right. Any yeah. any emotion any emotion. Uh, yeah. I'm supposed yeah. to stop and let you make uh, this announcement if you would like to go ahead and do that. Thank you. I, I, I wanted to do that. Thank you very much. I just want to say to everybody again and um, take this opportunity to let you know um, that Chrism works 24-7, as you know, teaching people about Kundalini, and he doesn't charge for his teachings, but he makes them freely available for everybody. And this radio show that you're listening to now is just one of the sources of Kundalini information and support that Chrism gives. And to those of you who are listening live to us now or who are listening on the archives and would like to support Chrism or are able to support Chrism, then you can do that by making a donation. Um, and be it large or small, it will be gratefully received. So I will give you the place that you can go. Um, it is wwwascension kundalini dot blogspot dot com and I'll give you that again. It's actually Chrism's um blogspot and there's a donate button at the top right hand corner. Um w w w dot ascension hyphen kundalini dot blogspot dot com. And if you don't have a biro and you're listening, you can always Google it by just putting in Chrism Blogspot Ascension and, and you'll find it in that manner as well. Thank you for that, Chrism. Oh, well, thank you. And, and thank you, everyone, uh, who donates and who, you know, puts some of their energy into to keeping these teachings uh, alive. Thank you, everyone. Um, so as we continue with the eyes, the eyes... Uh, will be controlled and, and will r relinquish their control to the kundalini. Kundalini can make you blind. They can just take away the eyesight for a while. The eyesight is not so much controlled by force of, of ocular muscular movement. It's a, it's a force of consciousness, a force of awareness, a force of survival that uh, that the body has. You'll the, the kundalini can just take that away for a moment, just to let you know that you are not any longer a person that is normal. <laughs> I use that term loosely. 
Okay. It doesn't do that typically, though, but it, I just, it, it, it has done that with some folks. Um, for me, even before I started the show today, I, I turned around and, and, uh, and I was grabbing a towel to wipe the copious amounts of sweat dripping down me. And uh, the, the Kundalini took over my eyesight, and showers of sparks, showers of, of energy were swirling around me. You know, as I get ready for the for the broadcast, and they're so beautiful. They're so, and nobody else can see them. You know, no, no, no NSA, you know, secret, super duper machine can see this or register this or know this or understand this. Only you, only you can see this. And they're never something to be afraid of. You know, the, as the Kundalini takes over your eyesight and superimposes a a, a a a swirling mass of sparks and energy that totally impedes, totally impedes your normal vision. It's it's okay. It's normal. It's not coming while you're driving 70 miles an hour down I-95. It's not doing that. It's waiting until you're sweating to death in a Walmart parking lot some springs town, turning around, reaching for a towel, and it's like, oh, okay, here we go, boom. And it takes over your eyesight. And so know this. It's like Kundalini will do this, and it's okay. It's perfectly okay. As you surrender to this process, as you learn to live and love and laugh and, 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 and embrace this Kundalini within you, you'll have many strange phenomena. And some of those phenomena will include certain body functions or normal uh, basic functions being changed. So notice I, it didn't make me go blind. It just superimposed another field of energy, visual energy, over the one that I'm used to. to you know, in a, you know, in the, the physical, the physical, uh, should I say, uh, viewing capacities. Uh, and so, as the as the third eye controls the two lower eyes so will your ability to to see certain phenomena increase or decrease. Uh, entities, I can see entities whenever I want, but it shifts. It, it goes from the ocular position of looking at a stop sign or, or looking at this store called the shoe department. I'm looking at the shoe department right now. And then when I when I consciously switch it to the pineal, then I can see the entities that are connected to, uh, actually a lot of them are connected to this program right now that I'm seeing specifically one. Anyway, so uh, you can see the entities. You can see the energetic life forms that are around you, around other people, inside other people. You can see people's broken hearts. You can feel it. You can see it and feel it at the same time. This is what I call Split viewing. You can see the, the the energetic spiritual at the same time that you're seeing the physical mundane. Okay, so the eyes are just amazing. And then I have to add another eye because there is another eye to add. the The eye that I'm adding to this is the seventh chakra eye. E Y. And this is the, the eye that the entire top of the head turns into and allows you to see in 360-degree vision. No joke. No joke. I'm sure you've seen, some of you may have seen a few of the pictures floating around the Internet of the top of a person's head being this giant eye with the, uh, with the eyelid and the, and the, and the uh, you know, extending down to where the, the sixth chakra is. Uh, the top of the human head literally can be turned into a 360-degree visual eye, staring at the heavens and all and everything around you. Okay. So, actually, this is a, this is a mutation of the, uh, not a mutation, but a permutation of the third eye. The third eye can just look up instead of looking straight out. So, there are the eyes. Let's Let's go in because... Let me, I'm not quite sure um, if there's anybody calling in. Do I have a... No, okay, good. So let's talk about the brain. The 
bicameral brain. Um, the brain, of course, is a very important organ within the Kundalini. Um, the Kundalini takes over the brain completely. Um, you become unicameral. No more are you bicameral, which means, you know, uh, divided in half. Your brain becomes a wholeness, even though you may not be allowed to experience the vast capacity that that wholeness is. You will experience certain developments within that wholeness that will that will help you manifest your destiny within a kundalini awakened uh, experience. Okay, let me clear some things up about kundalini awakening. Uh, this may not be your first time, Kundalini awakening. You may once the, once you get into the Kundalini and, and, it, and you, you begin to take lives or take bodies that are that after you have the first Kundalini, you're always going to have a Kundalini body after that, and that's you know some sort of a karmic event occurs that uh, that pushes you back into an unawakened state. By unawakened, I mean uh, a body that does not have the the probability of awakening the kundalini. With kundalini, you typically you take the energy with you. Incarnation after incarnation after that. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, this is not my first time with kundalini that I came back here to do this type of work with people. Um, you know, as I came into this world, even as a young, young, young child, I can remember things that I shouldn't be able to remember, breastfeeding, for example, or, or other types of scenarios uh, that I can remember. But even worse, uh, what you keep from a kundalini awakening is you keep many of the exalted skills. They come right along with you. Okay? You keep what you earn. You keep what you earn. And, and by having a Kundalini awakening in this life greatly uh, increases the propensity that the next life that you're going to take, uh, you're going to bring this Kundalini awakening with you. And it may not happen, uh, the, the, the skills may happen with you as in this future child that you'll become, but that, that body that that child is will also need to reawaken its Kundalini. So you don't come in. You don't come in typically with your, your your spine on fire. You come in with the vestiges of a previous life, with the the exalted gifts of the kundalini. You come in with the probability, the strong probability, that that future body's spine will indeed uh, light up with kundalini, and you'll go through this whole uh, kundalini awakening process again. In, but it'll be in, in addition to the previous one or two that you've already had. Those exalted skills will blend right over into the new ones. And uh, this is how a person comes into the divine evolution. So, you know, if you look at it, you can say that that with with the the organs, the the eyes, the brain, the heart, the spleen, all of these all of these areas. Uh, they're part of the of the physical mundane evolution towards Kundalini. Once Kundalini comes up, then the evolutionary expression changes to divine evolution. No longer is it is it mundane evolution or mundane physical. It is physical divine. It changes that whole expression. And I, I apologize for the road noise that you're hearing. Once again, I'm at a Walmart in in a city in northern Florida in this was the this is the best place that I could find on you know within the circumstances that I'm in right now. So uh, let's see here. I'm trying to get back online. There we are. Okay. So if you have any questions about this, if you have any questions about your uh, Kundalini awakening experience, the number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Uh, so feel free to call that number. Um, moving on, so you'll, you'll no longer will you have the bicameral brain. You'll have the unicameral brain. You'll have a one brain. Uh, one of the one of the uh, uh, of the, the systems that uh, were developed for out of body stimulation by uh, Robert Monroe 
he called it hemi-sync, hemispheric synchronization. That meant synchronization of, of the two hemispheres of the brain. Well, that works great. It works great for, uh, you know, getting going on a body, and, and if people want to explore that, then, then you know, they should. Uh, I've used it. It works. It's, 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 a, great, it's a great process. Um, with the Kundalini, uh, I, will, I will suggest that you do not use brain frequency modulation in order to stimulate Kundalini awakening. Plenty of that stuff out there right now. Even on YouTube, you can get it for free. You know, they, you know I, I forget what the terms are for it, but with regard to brain health, I suggest that you do not use brain entrainment systems. I will suggest that you do the work. It's not just the brain. It's the brain. It's the body. It's the consciousness. You know, it's the, the interplay between you and your environment, your physical environment, your emotional environment, your mental environment, your ego-based environment. It's working all five expressions of the body. All five. It's not just putting on a pair of headphones and going, ooh, that's a cool sound. You know, let's see what it does to my brain frequency. I don't, you know, I don't suggest you do this. And I understand that you can, you know, you know, certain things can be activated from that, but, you know, it's it's a very, very, very short uh, path into Kundalini Syndrome. Not something that I want any of you to experience, which is the whole reason why I'm doing these broadcasts. So the bicameral brain, the unicameral brain, whole brain, is you become male and female at the same time. You become white and black at the same time. You become here and there at the same time. You become human divine. When the when the spinal sweep occurs and the, the great pulse of Kundalini goes through the spinal uh and and, and explodes through the uh, through the brain, through the seventh chakra, the sixth and the seventh chakra. Uh, this unicameral experience occurs, and this is part of what causes a person to to feel at one with everything. At one with everything. At one with divinity. At one with with uh, with the mundane. At one with every piece of sand, every every leaf, every grass, every creature, every human. Uh, everywhere, all the time, at the same time. It's the flowering of the crown chakra. And it's the brain becomes this part of the conduit of divine expression through you on this world. So the brain's a huge deal. This is a huge deal because if you look at the brain, you have the you have the, 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 the two sides of the brain, but you also have the reptilian brain, the mammalian brain. You know, you you have the many different lobes of the brain, you know, where where, where memory or, or or emotional expressions are located. You have all of these different environments within the brain itself, the lower brain stem, autonomic functions, all of that stuff. And so when the Kundalini comes, it exalts each of these environments. I believe there are seven environments of the brain. So you know you add that to your to your you know your seven uh, you know the suggestions of how important seven systems are uh to the human equation. So the brain uh is a very big deal. It's a very, very big deal. And you and it is the seat of the oneness. Just just like the heart is the seat of the loving oneness. Both the heart and the brain are a very big deal. And and I don't want you to confuse the brain with mental function, even though it, 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 it is a part of that. You know, don't, don't just say, not, oh, I think right left it, or oh, I think left brain, or, you know, all of this stuff. You know, it's, this is, these are just mental permut- permutations of, of of people that who that have not yet had the, the whole brain experience that Kundalini brings, 
you know, they're struggling to figure out why a person does such and such thing. And they don't know that it's, it's basically a, uh, an evolution towards oneness, whole brain, whole brain function that they're that they're struggling to to perceive. The brain is not just about mental function. When a person experiences bliss, the 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 bliss and the love is felt in the head as well as the heart. You feel like your head's going to explode with love sometimes. You know, there, there's a direct, from the fontanelle, a, a line of energy extends upward, and it extends into the heavenly divine environment. And that environment backfeeds. It backfeeds an energetic pulse back down through the fontanelle and into the brain and into the body. And that back feed is a, a you know ecstatic or blissful experiences, and it's strong. It's so 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 strong and beautiful, very beautiful, very loving. Of course, you know if you're in a fear of it, you're, you're having Kundalini syndrome. Well, then your ego mind will you know will adjust that into being a very painful, terrible, fearful experience. But uh, Hopefully none of you are, are having that experience right now who are listening to it. And those who are, you can begin to adjust your thinking because it's a very, very, very strong, beautiful thing that you're having. That divine backbeat through the fontanelle, into the brain, into the heart, and into the entire body of the human system. So the brain, I mean, you know, once again, like the heart, I could do 100 shows on just the brain, uh, you know, just you know, the, the the frontal lobes and the reptilian brain, the mammalian brain, you know, all of these different levels and environments of the brain. But I'm not. I'm going to go right to the ears now. The ears. The ears are, you know, God, they're just, I, I get blown away by the, you know, when I look at these from a Kundalini perspective, I just think, oh, my God, the divine artwork. The divine artwork. You can look at a person's ear and you can tell the way their life is going to go. You know, the Chinese do it with, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I had to date to call it iridology because I know they're dealing with the, with the iris, but <laughs> I think iridology is more appropriate to the ears, don't you? Anyway, um, as you look at the ear, the outside of the ear and the, the different folds and the different lines of the ear, uh, this is a signature. No two ears are alike. No you know, two people's ears are alike, except maybe twins. Twins might have some very similar things going on, but even then, they're unique. And as you look at the, 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 the waves and the concaves and the permutations of the human ear, uh, it's not just physical sound or physical-based sound that the ears are designed to pick up. They're designed to, sp- to pick up spiritual sound or energetic sounds as well. I hear energetic frequencies 24-7, and sometimes they're, I hear them through a specific ear. I'll, I'll hear one frequency, one very strong frequency coming through uh, an ear. And in many ways, this is a spiritual, this can be a, a, you know, an entity maybe trying to communicate with you, or, or uh, a download is occurring for you if, you, if you're K-awake. Uh, you'll, you might hear a very low, like a what will happen is your ear will feel like it's being completely covered up and smothered by a, an energetic force. And so, like, say, we'll just say your left ear is all of a sudden, it's, it's like hearing, but it's hearing underwater. Your right ear is just being normal, but your left ear is like hearing underwater, and, it, and you feel this, or this, you know, this type of uh, vibration coming through, and it lasts for about a minute, maybe less, and it fades away. And, you know, a download has been achieved or a communication has been achieved. Uh, you may not know. Don't try to figure it out. You can feel it more than you can figure it. Uh, but the ears are designed for this. This is to let you know that the universe of hearing is as strong as the universe of seeing. The universe of hearing is as strong as the universe of seeing. You can hear a person's intentions in their words. You can hear a person's uh, feelings in their voice. 
of voice. You can hear, some of you can feel the kundalini in my voice as it comes through. Uh, and you're, it's coming through to you right now through your ears. There are those of you that are inside of my Shakti pot tonight. Oh, and by the way, hello everybody inside the Shakti pot. Uh, it's been going very well. I'm almost thinking of doing traveling every time I do a Shakti pot because it seems to really resonate strongly. Uh, and, the, and the Shakti pot is going very well. Tonight is the Crown Chakra. Yay. Yay. Hello, hello. And uh, just for those of you who are following the instructions, uh, tonight, uh, let go and let God. Let the divine do its work. You take your consciousness out of the equation where nothing is best if you can get away with it. If you can't get away with it, wear white for purity. Okay. So that's, that's for those of you inside the Shakti Pot. Shakti Pot, for those of you who don't know that, what that is, it's, a, it's the gifting of my energy to those who, who would wish to receive the Kundalini from me within them. And uh, I do this on the solstice and the equinox uh, throughout the year. Uh, I've only missed once, which was last winter, because I just needed to take a break. So I was allowed to take that break. Anyway, so uh, the ears will hear intention. The ears will hear energy and feel energy. And in in ways, uh, they're like tentacles that reach into into the energetic, um, radiance fields. You can feel radiance with your ears, with your hearing of the ears. Celestial music is a is a very very strong, uh, exalted form of of music that will hit the ear and then from the ear permeates the entire body. Uh, you can hear celestial music with Kundalini. Okay, it'll happen. Doesn't happen for everyone but it does happen for some. So the ears the ears are very, very... And they're working 24-7. They're very strong. They're working 24-7. You don't just hear with the ears, but you do hear with the ears. The, the portion of the brain that is dedicated to hearing uh, is stimulated by the kundalini, so you can hear other frequencies much of the time. So, you know, like I hear it all the time. Uh, Amelia, do you hear this? Do you hear the music of of, uh, of energy frequencies? I do hear it on occasions. I hear um, I hear a lot of vibrations and and high pitched sounds and a kind of a um, a background noise quite often, a bit like a pulse too sometimes. How about you, Rosemary? Do you hear any of this? Didn't think I was going to call on you, did you? Actually, hey, Rosemary. Hi. Kristen, that's Hi, interesting. Rosemary. Hi, can you hear me? Oh, yes, loud and clear. Okay. It's interesting that you should ask that because I don't hear music, but and I haven't heard it um, recently, but I remember in these last couple years that when I would get into bed and be lying there going off to sleep it was like there were conversations in the background like far away they were just sounds that were like voices and it wasn't machinery sound because i know those we all know those in our house but i i said i think that's just all what it is it wasn't didn't scare me it was just there yeah well no none of this should scare you of course you know when you don't have the information uh, you know, some of it can be can be quite disconcerting, and that can lead into fear. And uh, and thank you, Rosemary, for responding. I'm going to put you back there to protect you here. Here we go. And uh, yeah, it can be it can be very very. Uh, I mean, you can literally have an entity shout your name in an empty room, and your ears will hear it. Your ears will pick that up. It'll pick up the divine music. It'll pick up uh, the divine whisperings. Okay. It'll pick up the crickets and the many insects that you can hear with and feel with your ears, but you can't 
see them with your eyes. You can hear them loud and clear, chirping, chirping, chirping. You can hear the hum of the bees. You can hear your name being called. But there's no one there, and there's no bug there. There's no insect there. There's nothing there except you can hear it. So it is there. It's just not there on a visual wavelength. Certainly not a mundane visual wavelength. And so the ears are another set of eyes, in my opinion. They're just looking in a different frequency range. And the same goes with, with, the, with the nose and the nostrils. You know, both, both nostrils are the... Uh, oh, hello, Fest. Good, good to see you there. Good to see you, my friend. Ah, I'm always around. <laughs> I, I I wanted to respond to that. Um that 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 was a part of the um my initial um experience that I told you about. The top down I started to hear the um for me it's a it's a high pitched sound. Um sometimes uh and I have noticed that uh, the tone in the left ear is different from the, the right ear, and then there's actually a, a central tone, which originates both of, uh, of the um, responses in each ear. And I, geez, I, I've been experiencing that for, oh, at least 40 years now. And, you know, I, I thought that it was tinnitus, right? And, uh, uh, I never got checked for it, but uh, I had my hearing my hearing checked and said that it was pretty good. But uh, I said, "Well, there's this 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 high pitched tone that I'm hearing here, and sometimes it can sound like a like a flute. Sometimes it can sound like an orchestra, like an entire orchestra, um, and sometimes it can sound like a bell or a drum, then uh, or thunder." There are many different manifestations that come from. Well, this. certainly, certainly with you, with you and your out of body work, for sure, you, yeah. you you would hear some of those those sounds. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to jump in and say, yeah, I know exactly what you mean, and yeah, it's been around for a long time, long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you're doing great. How's your, how's your Shakti helping? Is that working for you this time? Oh, it's so excellent! I'll tell you, it's just I I had um, finished my midday, and uh, I walked into the kitchen to to wash dishes, and this wave of bliss just enveloped me, and uh, I I had to stop, and I I, I just said, this is absolutely amazing. Uh, I've never had it this way. And I think that, you know, I, I wrote you and said, you know, I prefer for you to be at home because I feel safer that way. But I, I think you're right. Maybe you should take a road trip. <laughs> All the I time. can't do that, everyone. Everyone is listening. I started the, I started the road trip um, uh, two days before the Shakti Pot. I, I do a Shakti Pot week. On the on the uh, summer solstice from the 21st of June to to the uh, 28th or the 20 yeah 27th of June and uh, and and in that time I have gone from Santa Rosa California uh, through uh, Arizona New Mexico Texas uh, Louisiana Mississippi Alabama and now into Florida here and I definite definite uh, you know, motel Shakti pot. I have to say, <laughs> most of the time I've been in a motel six at three a.m. You know, I, I kept my watch on the, on PST Pacific Standard Time, so I'd know when to give it. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But tonight, tonight is the divine. The divine is going to come through tonight. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that about dishwashing. It makes makes dishwashing a whole different experience, sure. doesn't it? Sure. So, sure. thank you very much. Thank you well, very Thank much. you for participating. Thank you yes, all for participating, you and Rosemary and Amelia and, and everybody else who's listening in there. And if there's a person... Actually, go ahead. actually Chris, and there's a few people in the chat room. And um, 
Bruno has joined us and he says that um, it's fascinating that you're speaking about ears and he's delighted to be listening to you because he's had a pain in his ear all day, in his right ear all day. Really? Because, you know, I can't yeah, get into yeah. the chat room on this little iPad. I don't know how to uh, get into that. Okay, uh, well, I- and also, there was a comment from somebody else who said that um, when you were speaking about eyes, and they said, in the Book of Love, um, written in the 1200s by the Cathars, um, there's a quote that says, uh, we will know each other by our eyes. And many of the people this person has met who have Kundalini, and um, the eyes always pull her in. And And she also had the question, which was, um, the people around her, um, on oh, second and I'll see what it says. It seems, seems people around me have had the awakening and also people I am around now are receiving the energy. Is this contagious in a good way or do we put ourselves around people who are in similar states? Actually, you don't get to place well, yourself. And, and Bruno, Bruno I'm, in, I'm coming to you. No worries, my friend. I'm coming to you and it's nice it's nice to know you're listening. It's good, good, good to know you're there. And, and uh, just, just a second here. Um, it's, it's not that we direct ourselves towards other people. It's the divine directs us. I mean, we're, in, in, in some way, we're like little marionettes to the divine. Once that part of us is awakened, and that, that feedback, energetic loop going from our fontanelle to the divine, and then back from the divine to us, it begins to manifest. A, a a form of guidance or direction that will guide people to us, but also guide us to certain people. Uh, I don't advertise, and so so you know people get guided to the the KAS one site uh, by that divine uh, guidance that they have within them. Uh, and even when it's not in an expressive Kundalini or you know an awakened Kundalini way a person will have the probability or the predilection towards having the kundalini awaken within them and they will get guided to the appropriate source of information for them. And then as far as the the effect of radiance, I believe is what this person is describing. And the radiance, yes, 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 the radiance will fall upon other people. And it is always in a good way. Uh, divinity doesn't really have the good, bad type thing. They just have a uh, a divine uh, um, unanimity. The 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 the, the divine uh, uh, unanimity that that feeds a person what they need to have in order for them to to evolve further into their own divine um, evolution. And so as you stand next to that person in the grocery store or or in the hospital or wherever, you know, getting gas or whatever you're doing, your radiance is is flowing upon everybody within the uh the signature of of that, that footprint, that radiance footprint that comes from the awakened Kundalini person. And I just did a video on that, uh, and I'll be putting that out on YouTube and and what I did is, is I visited a crater in in Arizona. It's right off of the I-40, and this crater is humongous. It is a it's an asteroid blast that happened about 50,000 years ago. And you know, the first thing I thought of was a Kundalini radiance footprint. So go ahead and, and if you can get to the uh, YouTube channel at uh, Chrisum and zero, just go Chrisum dot Kundalini, and that'll take you there. But anyway. Yes, 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 and congratulations. Now, I also, also want to touch on the, the Cathars. The Cathars were very, very cool people in, in, in very interesting ways. And, of course, the, you know, any belief system that, that, that practiced what they practiced, you know, would, would – because back then people were flowing to them like crazy, and the Catholic Church was afraid of losing power. And uh, the priests of the, of the Cathar religion were a man and a woman. And they didn't build churches. They chose to worship in meadows or in the forest. The forest was their church. The meadow was the church. The earth itself was the church. And so they had very, very, very interesting takes on on divine practice and divine interaction, uh, you know, with with the environment. And so, 
Yeah, the Cathar people, very cool, very cool. And if, uh, if she can go ahead and uh, and let that uh, tell us about that book uh, more, if she can, if she's still on the chat room, uh, I, you know, I, I I would I think people of a Kundalini nature would benefit hearing a you know some point of view from the, from the Cathars. You know, they they weren't without their own issues. They did have their own issues, but uh, you know, they were they were far closer to the truth. Uh, at their at that time than I think uh, any other system that was flourishing at that time. You have to remember that uh, that uh, Hildegard, Saint Hildegard, was also flourishing at that time in the 10th century, and uh, she was also Kundalini awakened. So, yeah, the early the early Cathars, bless their bless their continuing spirits. Uh, Bruno, you have a pain in your right ear now. Uh, is it a pain that is like? what you get if you're going to have an earache. Uh, uh, Amelia, can you translate this for me? Because I, I can't get into that chat room. Well, I'm assuming he can hear you. So um, I'll let you know if he's typing. I'll put this into the chat room as well, okay? So uh, and what he said was, yeah, okay. Go ahead. Well, he just said that um, he has had a pain in his right ear all day. So maybe I'm typing now. So oh, that's okay. It. Well, there's a few things, that, and I think I discussed this last time, was that uh, uh, during the Kundalini Awakening, the eustachian tube, not, not the eustachian tube, but the ear canal can twist. It can, it can spiral. And in that spiral... Uh, if you take a shower or you go swimming or something, certain amounts of water can be left uh, on the on the ear canal, and that can form into a into a boil or into a kind of like an an inner ear canal acne, and and this can this can be very painful, very very painful. And I'm going to suggest that uh, you know you know go to your MD if you need to, but what they'll give you is some pain remediation, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I don't need you struggling to be in pain. Uh, but the other option is is that the kundalini, or the other possibility, is the kundalini is working on your right side in your right ear, and and if it's if it's just a brief, a brief, uh, what I'm getting is like a like a little stabbing pain, um, not a consistent pain, but like a kind of like a little stabbing pain. You may feel a, an action of grace upon the actual eardrum, and the eardrum can begin to because the eardrum's very very sensitive uh, skin or, or tissue, and the eardrum can begin to to respond to the action that the kundalini makes upon it in a in a in a subtle pain. This is pain that. That uh, if an MD were to to scope your ear and, and look at the, you, everything would look normal to them. They go, oh, phantom pain, right? But this is this isn't phantom pain. This is this can be Kundalini activation pain, unless it is, of course, you know something else that's occurring uh, with regard to to an inner ear boil or 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 uh, 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 an infection of the ear. Make sure that you that you. What I like to do, and you know, I'm not. Gonna, I don't know if this is medical advice, so I'm just going to say what I like to do for myself is I like to dip a Q-tip uh, in some some hydrogen peroxide, and I just kind of wash out the the ear canal with that right after I take a shower. And I have to say, this is from Barbara, uh, who's who's there at the ashram. She does this. She kind of passes it along. And, and it seems to work pretty well. It keeps you from having those inner ear boils. So uh, unless it's that, Bruno, and if it's something that's just started with the uh, with the Shakti pot, you know, if it just started with the Shakti pot, then I want you to see it more as a purification, a level of purification that's occurring right now, that uh, that is taking place in your sacred male. Let's look at the sacred male inside you, Bruno. Let's see where he is being honored, where he is being heard. Is the sacred male being heard by you? Are you are you allowing your sacred male to be heard by others? Look at the relationship that you have 
with the sacred male in your life or the sacred males uh, in your life, your father, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the male, the tapestry of male energy within your life. And look at that. And as you start to look at that, maybe you need to forgive uh, somebody who would qualify as a sacred male um, um, quality in your life. And if you can do that forgiveness, see what happens to that pain. See what happens to that pain. Kundalini is typically very responsive, extremely responsive. So if it's of a kundalini nature, you know, see what a little forgiveness can do. If it's just something that's not real painful, it's not, you know, let it go for a little bit, but if it continues to go, then I want you to have your ears scoped, you know, see if it's an inner ear boil. Um, I like to lance them myself, but we'll see what your MD says. Uh, and then uh, maybe you can also uh, Skype with me about this too, Bruno, and I can maybe just put something into you that will help you uh, de-exit and to deactivate it as well. Unless, of course, of a kundalini nature, which, which if it's that, then I won't touch it. I trust the kundalini in you uh, implicitly. Implicitly. Okay. All right. Let's see how we're doing here on time. Okay. I have I have 14 minutes, so anybody else that wants to call in, any of you that are on the chat uh, group that I can't see at the moment, feel free to call in with a question, 347-934-0026. Um, once again, it's 347-934-0026. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the systems, and I was talking about the nose. Now, many of you... Well, who under- okay. <laughs> Hello, Can I interrupt yeah, you? Yeah. yeah. yeah um, of course. Just um, sadly, is the person who was writing about the Tatars, and she says she will post about the book on the Yahoo group and give a link to it. And Bruno oh, says, thank you, thank, thank you, you very much. Ver- Okay, and Bruno says, thank you very much for all your answers. The pain is accompanied by a lot of fatigue all day long, and it was very difficult to practice the Tibetans because of this. Oh, it was accompanied by fatigue. Well, that puts it into a a Kundalini scenario. Good, good, good. He needs to look at the sacred male and the honoring of the sacred male in his life. The Shiva, the Christ, the Father energy. Okay? Look at that. Listen to that. Listen to that. Ask it a question. Ask me a question. You know, I'm a, I am also a representative of the sacred male, and so ask me a question about something that has that uh, maybe been plaguing you, Bruno. You can do it in a private email or on a, on a Skype or whatever. You don't have to do it here on the air on the chat room. Uh, you know, Source yourself. See where it is that that there may be a an issue uh, that's that's been with you for a while. Something that has to do with receiving information, receiving a communication, hearing a voice, hearing an idea, hearing somebody else who may need to be honored or who who may need to be listened to in your life. The Kundalini doesn't typically give you pain without a reason, and you you should always be able to discern that reason by asking the Kundalini in you yourself. And I'm going to suggest that you do that first. Do that first. If You know, if it's sapping you of your energy, then just use that as a way of, of, of an indication saying, okay, Bruno, slow down. Slow down. Meditate. Go into a communication with your kundalini. Ask the question, what is this? And what am I to learn from this? And see what may come to you within the kundalini language. And and I may have mentioned before in other programs that the kundalini language consists of symbols and ideas and pictures that that are personal to you. Personal to you. Okay? So ask yourself, go go into that meditative state, slow down, 
go into the meditative state, greet the Kundalini by name, ask it this question first, and uh, let us know. Let us know how this goes. Unless the Kundalini says, don't let him know. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. Sometimes that occurs. Sometimes that occurs. Okay, all right. And then I'm looking back here. Let's see. Okay, all right. The nose. The Ida and the Pingala, these are the uh, rivers of energy that circulate around the main river, the, the Mississippi, which we'll call your spine, uh, the spinal cord. Uh, that that main river that connects the ocean of Kundalini uh, to you is it has uh, two other major uh, currents or rivers of energy that that uh, that go in different directions around each chakra, kind of weaving themselves up all the way up and around, and they terminate at the uh, at the nostril on both sides of your nose, the upper lip of the nostril, about an eighth of an inch inside the upper lip of each nostril, and and so this is a this is a a, a huge energetic. Uh, position in the nose, in the nasal membrane, and and you can smell words, you can smell colors, you can smell identification. It is no accident that almost, you know, the, you know, many of the other mammals and the reptilians, they can smell identification. They can smell information. It's only people that don't really have that capacity, and it's probably just people in the West, because the you know the Western people, you know, we're we're used to our gadgets, and so we don't necessarily uh, have a lot of uh, interest in in the the natural skills that this body has to offer, and and the scenting, the scent, you know, smelling is a very 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 psychic thing. The Kundalini, the Kundalini, of course, will honor that that sensory, and it will come as a as a, a a certain kind of lily, a beautiful lily smell, and and uh, and uh, Amelia and I smelt that at at, uh, at, uh, at Lourdes in France, you know, when we were walking down, and another another uh, a person we were traveling with, we all smelled this beautiful beautiful scent where there were no flowers at all. And we knew, we each of us knew it was a kundalini origin. Okay. The kundalini will also come to you as a as a the, the gift of, of the of the scent of roses or the gift of the of the scent of uh of incense. You know, as as you would burn in a in a in a in a Buddhist you know, in a Buddhist format or a Hindu format. Uh so yeah, the the, the nose the nose and the kundalini are very, very, very strongly connected. And the nose, as, as, as the kundalini comes up, certainly if you're doing the alternate nostril practices or the pranayama practices, which is the alternate nostril practice, uh, the ida and the pingala become stimulated. Those two rivers that course around the sushumna, which I always mispronounce, the spinal cord, which I don't mispronounce, you know, as they as they circulate around the spinal cord, um, they terminate right there. And so, many of the ancients would use stimulative techniques, uh, such as pranayama, alternate nostril breathing, in order to stimulate stimulate the the one river that's called Ida and the other river that's called Pingala, as they circulate around each of the seven chakras. Okay, so the the nose and Kundalini are amazingly connected. Especially, you know, one eighth of an inch inside the upper lip of each nostril, and you may get an acne there. For those of you that have the Kundalini awake, and you may you may get an acne there. It's normal. Uh, don't pick it. Uh, it's normal. It is. It, you know, you. It'll feel definitely like a uh, like a kind of like what I was describing an inner ear acne to be. It'll feel just like that. And uh, it is basically an overstimulation 
or an, or an overexpression uh, that is coming from the Ida and the Pingala uh, in the upper lip uh, of, of the nasal mucosae. Okay, and and so don't let it bother you. It'll, it'll irritate you a little bit, but just be be all right with it. Let it alone. Let it alone. Um, if you feel like you need to go at it with a Kleenex or something like that, your Kundalini tells you to do so, then do so. Otherwise, just let it heal. It'll it'll back down. It'll back down again. No worries. Don't try not to pick it. Try not to let it get infected by you constantly touching it with your finger. Okay. Very important with that. Uh, now let's talk about the mouth and the tongue and the teeth. I don't have much time. I got four minutes. Uh, the tongue is one of the major switches, the, the master switch. So when I when I'm telling you to put your tongue up behind your upper front teeth, well, this is a Taoist technique. Uh, the ancients of the ancient China, the Taoists. You know, they did a lot of really positive work with helping a person accept and and surrender to the kundalini and one of these surrendering techniques was to put the the uh the, the tongue tip behind the upper front teeth well there are four other uh lingual positions that i know of where you you basically follow the soft palate back towards uh the the nasal the nasal entrance which and if you stick your tongue up the nasal entrance that's called kachari mudra in the uh, in the sanskriti context uh, you know, and they use that in order to to drink uh, uh, pineal uh, sweat or amrita, as they call it. And I don't, you don't really. I mean, if Kundalini is already active in you. You don't need to be drinking, you know, uh, pineal uh, sweat. You know, just leave it alone. But the other lingual positions are very important, especially the first one, putting that up that that tongue tip behind the upper front teeth connects the, 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 you know, many of the major systems uh, with the kundalini, the front, the back, the top, the bottom. And so do practice that. You'll notice that with the kundalini, you'll, your tongue tip will go there automatically. Your tongue tip will go there automatically. And the tongue, the tongue is huge. I mean, uh, you know, boy, I don't have enough time to get into the tongue so much here, but but it is a big deal, uh, and as I said, there are different lingual positions for different types of things. Uh, know this, and know that that uh, that as your kundalini guides you, it will guide the position of your tongue on the roof of your mouth, otherwise known as the soft palate. Okay. Uh, if you've been born with a certain um, a cleft palate or something like don't let that freak you out. Put your, put your tongue tip behind those up front teeth. Nothing's wrong with you. Everything's right with you. You are the way you need to be, okay? So don't worry about that. Put your tongue tip behind those upper front teeth and let that do its work for you. Um, I want to thank uh, uh, Amelia Santara for for putting this program together. I'd like to thank Eileen Loro for uh, helping the, the Kundalini Awakening Systems uh, uh, organization in the many ways that she has. I would like to thank you, the listener, and, and all of you, Bruno and Sandy and everybody, uh, Rosemary and, 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 and uh, Fashti. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to this to this conversation. I may or may not do another fourth one on uh, on a continuing health. Maybe you can email me at k fire for all. That's k f i r e f o r a l l at yahoo dot com and give me your feedback and your suggestions about this. I'd like to thank. Uh, uh, Sigrid and her husband uh, for listening because I know they listen to this. I'd like to thank. Yes, I, I'm, they're telling me I have 90 seconds. I'd like to thank Saint Anne too. I'd like to to thank uh, Magali and all of the other people that are listening to the show and that listen to the show regularly. You really propel me further into doing show after show after show after show. And uh, as a team, all of us together. We, we help many people who are struggling within uh, uh, the ignorance of, of Kundalini that is so uh, pervasive in the Western in the Western world. And so, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for listening live and for listening in the archives. And and uh, I will be back with you next week. Uh, this time, PST, 3 p.m. PST. 
uh, with another with another uh, conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. Thank you for listening.